So let's look at the 49ers to start out with and how things have broken down because the 49ers, they're off coming off the bye. They have Cleveland, the Rams, Washington coming up. They have the most fantasy points per game scored from the running back position. They've had the most opportunities per game at the running back position. Uh, the third most rushing yards. They're averaging 170 rushing yards per game. Now, now, real quick, the third most rushing yards, that's amazing. Keep in mind, they've only played three games. Everyone else has played four, and they're still the third most rushing yards. It's ridiculous. And this is Kyle Shanahan and what he's able to do. Now, you don't ideally want to talk about four different names when you're talking about a backfield. Sure, committee backs, yada, yada. You might share some time. Talking about Matt Breida, Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, and now Tevin Coleman potentially coming back, that is difficult. And so when you look at what's taken place so far, obviously Tevin Coleman, in week one, he was banged up. In week one, Matt Breida had 44% of the snaps, Mostert had 29%, Coleman had 26%, but went out with an injury. So you look at the two weeks after, Breida was at 29%, whereas Mostert was at 47% in week two. And then Breida was at 41% in week three against Pittsburgh. Mostert was at 30%. Now, Jeff Wilson oh, is, still, is he's still tied for second in red zone rushing attempts, and he's only played in two of the four games. So we know there is – Dude's got four rushing touchdowns. Yeah, there's a propensity <laughs> for Shanahan to go to the running back in the red zone. Now, we don't know if that's going to be Tevin Coleman when he comes back. I believe it will be. We don't know. You're 100% correct. Shanahan could do whatever, but I my belief, based on what we've heard from r trusted writers out of San Francisco, uh, what we've seen with Jeff Wilson, who was not even active on the roster prior to Tevin Coleman going down, I believe Tevin Coleman is going to be that goal line back, which the role, according to my name is Jeff, seems very valuable. I, I tried to make some trades for Tevin Coleman this week. Well, the Tevin Coleman play makes a lot of sense because even if he isn't handed that role or he splits that role... We know his involvement in the offense is going to be vastly different than that of Jeff Wilson Jr. I mean, for me, it's – I mean, it, you're you're delving into rational coaching once again, which is a very tumultuous place to be. But the fact that that role, the goal line role, was given to Jeff Wilson, who was not even active for the team week one. Like, they said, okay, this is your job. Well, you have these two running backs who are already there in Burita and Mostert, and you – chose not to give them that role I mean it that to me speaks that Tevin Coleman would be the one to get it back unless they're they, they go full wacky and play well four running backs yeah and, and if you want to look at it from a different perspective I would only I would simply say that you want to hand you know Matt Breed has had issues with injuries and there's a, certainly a certain amount of touches and workload they want to give him without Tevin Coleman they knew that Breida most of were going to carry the load Breida mostly between the tackles. So there could be the narrative that, look, now you can spread it around and we don't know for sure. But I, I like the bet on Tevin Coleman. The 49ers do run two running back sets 36% of the time. The league average is 9%. So they have a couple guys out there frequently. They give their running backs more touches than just about anybody in football. Now, as of right now, you who, you, who do you have confidence starting this week? This week? I mean, Cleveland has been... Pretty good against the running right. back. They're ranked 10th in the league. I was looking at them when I was looking at some start of the week options at quarterback this week saying, hey, what's going to happen in San Francisco? But you're coming off the bye week. Jason, what were you going to say? This week, I think I am 100% fine starting uh, Mostert and Breida. Those are the two that I'm, I'm assuming most... that Coleman is – is this a – Coleman's so, inactive? I, I'm, I, I am saying I'm fine starting them either way. Because I truly believe that either way they will be involved. This, I, it's rare to want to be okay with three backs on a team. And by rare, I mean this is the only situation that exists like it. But if you, over the last several weeks, started any one of the three backs, including Jeff Wilson, you've been fine. Right. You've been really well. Kyle Shanahan's system, it works for running backs. <laughs> you've been very well. Uh, very, quite well. Quite well, indeed. So, and just a reminder, Tevin Coleman, he had that uh, the high ankle sprain, was given an evaluation of four to six weeks. So if he's back now, that's him doing uh, healing quite well. As so how do you treat these players, though, when it comes to trade value? I don't think Coleman plays this week. So I regardless of whether too. he plays or not, though, how do you view 
It might be easy for people to want to run and trade Matt Breida or Mostert, Mostert especially, on the basis that, look, his time is running out. Is that a mistake? To trade Mostert? No. If you can trade him for a startable player, I would do that. I mean, he, like Mostert's out there available on people's waiver wires as well. It should be interesting. With I, I think Coleman's going to miss a little bit more time. But do you guys hear the you guys hear the rumors? The Emmanuel Sanders rumors? No, oh, do what? tell. There have been some rumors about uh, San Francisco's interest in acquiring em Emmanuel Sanders, and with the Broncos being at zero and four now, Emmanuel Sanders and Chris Harris Jr. both potentially on the trade block as they look to rebuild the team. So interesting. You know, the, there's an interest there from Shanahan. Shanahan like Sanders. I don't know what that would mean for Sanders. I imagine it's worse. Uh, That's the way I kind of envisioned it. Shannon, uh, Sanders is just great. So I think he'll That's be. True. I think it will be okay. The Shanahan system can put up some pretty prolific passing numbers as well if they have the weapons. And my dynasty shares of Dejon Hamilton smile at the <laughs> at the thought of this happening. Yeah, I mean, it, I I don't know how much you buy into the rumors. I mean, this was speculation based on some people around the team, but. It would make Cortland Sutton a very attractive trade target yes. because he's already – him and Sanders are both pretty much neck and neck on the season. And if if it's Sutton and Hamilton, now we had that chance last year with no Emmanuel Sanders. It didn't come to fruition, but Sutton's looked like but a better player this rookies, year. Rookies? Yeah. Much so better guys. If Tevin, rookie's going to rook, Mike. Yeah, you always, you always say that, not me. If Tevin Coleman <laughs> is out this week, which right now is a little early to tell, but it does seem like he's not ready to come back yet. If he's out – Obviously, you could start breeding Mostert. What about <laughs> Jeff Wilson? No. I'm not going to do it. Not going to roll the dice? I'm not. No. I'm not. Oh, hey. <laughs> I was just doing some heavy research. It's the research that makes the fantasy footballers great. Click that subscribe button and find out more.